Welcome to Grinning Goats Rise of Shadows card review tier list stream slash podcast slash valuation everything. This is Adwicktem. If you guys notice, my partner Murps is not here with us today. He uh, lives on through the tier list numbers. He definitely uh, helped a lot with that. Uh, but unfortunately, he can't be here today. So it's just me giving the explanations for uh, the Rise of Shadows and why we scored things the way we did. We have 100% of Rise of Shadows cards scored for you guys. So we're going to go over every single card coming up. Um, but first, uh, we are going to uh, we're going to talk about the meta. Actually, before we talk about the meta, just a little about who we are. Uh, we are we are the grinning goat. You don't see my partner here, Murps, uh, but but he's he's you know very involved, uh, very involved, very involved. And uh, we stream uh, we stream Hearthstone Arena and Hearthstone Arena only. So this is uh, we dig very very deep, and we have algorithms to uh, like calculate all the scores for these that go very very deep. Calculates all sorts of stuff like what turns cards are played, how they're trading on the board, like. Like really, just very in depth stuff that we're pretty sure no one else is even coming close to uh, to to doing on an algorithm level, and that most players, most even pro players, probably don't even think about this stuff on a on, on a conscious level. Um, so we're pretty proud of that, and uh, we also run the Lightforge podcast, which you may be listening to this on. That is a arena centric uh, podcast where we give our thoughts on what's happening every week. And uh, with the new wild rotation meta provi uh, pl provided by Blizzard, where everything's going to be shaken up every two months, we'll have more to talk about uh, now than ever. Um, and finally, we run a stream and YouTube, stream at twitch.tv slash grinning goat and YouTube at youtube.com slash grinning goat. Okay, that's it. That's it for uh, for the intro. Um, oh, and we're, we're really good arena players, too. Uh, uh, we've both been like... Uh, uh, towards and Murphs has been number one on the leaderboard uh, at once. I've been uh, in the top ten before, and uh, the most recent Twitch tournament um, that was run, me and uh, me and Tech got uh, got number one. So we are we are pretty good at this whole arena thing. Okay. Anyway, moving up. Meta. One thing that I like to do before every single new expansion comes out in Hearthstone is kind of run through what the meta is going to be like. Uh, this used to be extremely accurate because Blizzard used to just kind of not do anything in the arena, and your offering rates will be based just on uh, rarity of the card and whether it was a class card or not, and, uh, and that's it. And that's, then they added like a set bonus, where the most recent set has a little bit of a bonus. But either way, that was it. And so we knew exactly what the meta was going to be like, because we knew exactly what cards are getting into people's decks. Now, things are more complicated now because we have the bucket system, which means Blizzard gets to put all these cards into different buckets based on how good they think the cards are going to be, and then it gets adjusted based on how much people actually pick these cards, and you're only offered cards uh, of the same or adjacent bucket as where you are. I don't have time to explain all of it. If you don't know the bucket system, it's kind of complicated, but basically the end result is similar power level cards roughly get offered to you at the same time, so you get to make, um, like, you get to make more decisions per draft, right? You won't be offered fireballs next to river crocs because who would take a river croc over a fireball? In reality, a lot of people should. They just don't. Um, but you're just not going to get these choices anymore. And it's been like this for an entire year. And it's been mostly a success. Uh, we generally like the bucket system. Blizzard's gotten better at rebucketing. But what that means is now the meta is really going to be a lot determined by where things get bucketed. Because if good cards get bucketed low... Then you get to arbitrage the system, right? And then instead of like that, then fireballs would be with river crocs. And then you'll see a lot more fireballs in the meta. And that will change the shape of how the meta works. So um, a, a really, a really prominent one in the prior meta that we're coming from is Demon Bolt, where Demon Bolt was very lowly bucketed for whatever reason, even though it gets rebucketed like two, three times over the process, Blizzard never moved it up. And Blizzard never moved it up because people weren't picking Demon Bolts that often because people, meaning the average performing arena player, they're not the best players. They don't make the best decisions. They don't take Demon Bolt always. So you end up with Demon Bolt in something like the fifth bucket or something, which is pretty bad. Uh, whereas Demon Bolt's a premium card. 
Uh, so yeah, so that shapes the entire meta because now warlocks are super powerful. Now warlocks, when it comes to uh, demon bolt, requires you to have a board to be really powerful. So now zoo like warlocks are way more powerful than control like warlocks, and it, it cascades everything. So anyway, point being, how things are bucketed is now a huge effect on the meta. So we can't exactly precisely predict the meta anymore. Um, another big one that affected everything for the longest time before Rastakhan was uh, Fungal Mancer was very underbucketed. And when Fungal Mancer was very underbucketed, everybody wanted to get stuff on the board so they can Fungal Mancer their stuff and win the game. And it was oftentimes whoever Fungal Mancer first wins. Um, in the latest meta, the neutral that was the most underbucketed was Dragon Ball. And Dragon Ball's Dragon Ball was so, uh, that's the 3-6 that dealt one damage to everything. Because that was underbucketed, it, it meant that everybody had a lot of Dragon Ball Scorchers running around, which means anything that summons a whole bunch of 1-1s was heavily disadvantaged compared to where they would normally be. Um, because uh, towards the top, when you get to better players, they're all going to have picked their Dragon Balls. Um, so yeah, given all that, I don't want you guys to think that this meta analysis is going to be like the top amount of accuracy. Because the first point, I normally have four points in this, but the very first point I'm going to point out is that bucketing by Blizzard, including how they adjust things, is going to heavily affect this meta, just as it has heavily affected all the metas in the last year. And when I say bucketing, I mostly mean misbucketing, because Blizzard is going to get a lot of it wrong. This time, more so than other times, because all the, uh, all the, rot oh, all the sets rotating in uh, you have Old Gods rotating in, you have Mean Streets of Gadgetzam rotating in, you have, well, Witchwood, we already know, um, but you also have Nax rotating in. Those are also basically unbucketed. They may have stats from like prior metas, maybe they, they're too old and they're not using it now, but either way, it's going to be kind of rough. Uh, and I, I do not believe that they're going to get the bucketing on that perfect or anywhere near perfect. So on top of these new cards that they have kind of a shaky track record and improving but shaky track record on bucketing things correctly. Uh, they also have all these old cards. So something like half the cards available to you are newly bucketed. So it's going to be kind of a mess. Like just... So basically this prediction is not really going to be all that useful. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to make it as general as possible while still being helpful. So one thing that Blizzard cannot bucket away, like no matter how bad Blizzard does its bucketing, the meta is going to get faster. This is just, the cards are so overwhelmingly more pushy than the cards in the last available like meta that this is just going to get faster. We have, by proportion, you're going to be offered almost 50% more two drops and four drops than you were offered in the prior meta. So even if these are not the best two drops and four drops, even if some of them are over bucketed and under bucketed, and I already have a, a sneaking suspicion at least one premium two drop is going to be uh, under bucketed. We'll get into that later. Um, but that is going to be, uh, yeah, uh, that's going to cause the meta to be very uh, tempo based and very pushy. Uh, we're going to uh, look at uh let's let's take a look at uh at the tier list here um one of the things that's going to cause the pushing is this card uh and this is a haunted creeper it is a 142 on the tier list it's not a new card it's from dax but it's a two mana one two death rattle summon two one one spectral spiders uh it's a beast the spiders the summons is not a beast but that is seven stats for two mana it is an insane tempo card. I'm almost certain Blizzard's not going to put it into the first bucket where it should definitely go. And so, therefore, it's going to be a bit underbucketed, which means whenever you, get, you see it, it's a neutral card, right? So whenever you see it, you're going to pick it, right? Uh, and that itself, just this one card, is going to be incredibly meta-defining. Um, Another card that's big uh, that's going to cause the uh, meta to really speed up is Zombie Chow, which is a one mana two three death rattle restore five health to the enemy hero and Mistress of Mixtures one mana two two death rattle restore four health to both players. Zombie Chow is a one thirty one. Mistress of Mixtures is a one twenty six. They're premium cards, but like low premium. And you know what? 
I think we have confirmation from one of Crypt's streams where he got access to uh, to at least uh, an early build of uh, of the Rise of Shadows Arena drafting, where Zombie Chow was just kind of ridiculous. Uh, it, it was bucketed in the top bucket. So 131 in the top bucket, you're not going to want to pick that. So I don't know how much impact Zombie Chow is going to have, but it's at least an option, right? They've bucketed cards way lower than 131 in the top bucket. 131 is higher than like Bone Mare is right now, right? And that's a card you sometimes pick. So I'm not saying Zombie Shell is totally out of the meta, but it's not going to be meta dominant. Whereas Haunted Creeper is a 142, and it is, I'm almost certain, not going to be in the first bucket, at least off in the beginning, which means this is going to be something that defines the meta. Okay. Anyway. Getting away from uh, from the specifics, um, that means the whole meta is going to push. In addition to the whole meta being pushy, um, something else is happening. Uh, not just that there are the curve cards that are available for you to create the push, the the curve stone, the you know lots of uh, lots of things on the board, and both players fighting for the board in the early game. There's also a smaller number of taunts. So I'm going to switch the visual here and switch to the current tier list. This is, uh, this is the current tier list. It is not the new tier list. It's the one on the live servers. And I'm going to show you cards that will no longer be in the game. And these cards are basically all of your large taunts. So your Bone Mare, not going to be in the game anymore. Volcano Sword, not going to be in the game anymore. Furious Etten is still going to be in the game. Okay, one thing's still going to be in the game. Um... You go down a little bit more. Deranged Doctor, not going to be in the game anymore. Uh, and Sleepy Dragon, that's a big one. Nine mana, 12 taunt, uh, 12 uh, damage of taunt, not going to be in the game anymore. Giant Mastodon, nine mana, 10, uh, 10 health of taunt. None of them are going to be in the game anymore. These are never your like best cards, but they allow a lot of these really like late game stabilization based decks. Um, a lot of warriors, a lot of priests. That's what they allow to function. And they are all gone. And they're not getting replaced. The new cards that are coming in, they're not that big. The new cards that are coming in, you have your Bog Creeper, right? You still keep your, uh, your Fury Zetan. That's an 8 health and 9 health. But that's not comparing to, like, to stuff like... Um, Meshag Enforcer, right, with its 14 health and a Divine Shield, right? Or the 9 mana taunts we were talking about before with the Sleepy Dragons and the Mammothes. They just don't really compare. So without those huge taunts at the end of the game, this whole entire game is going to be moving faster. Now, that's not to say there's less taunts on an individual basis than there was before. Um, there's actually more five mana taunts. And when it comes to lower mana cost taunts, there, I mean, there's just not as much as before, but it's not as drastic. The biggest difference is that starting at like seven mana plus, you're not going to see your monster taunts anymore. And that allows the push it meta to resolve itself faster. Because if you're all about having two drops on the board, then three drops, maybe some one drops and four drops, and then you get to like a sleepy dragon and you don't have a hard removal, you lose all your board to just try to get through the Sleepy Dragon, and you lose. So you need a bigger deck. But when you get a bigger deck, you can't have all the twos anymore, and so you can't set up on two. And so what the prior meta was doing was kind of compensating by like not quite having enough twos, having a bunch of threes, and it was really just kind of awkward. Uh, it was a lot of like rock, paper, scissors on whether the opponent had one of these big taunts. Here, in the new meta, without those big taunts, it allows you to build a deck that starts on two and to resolve your entire game plan in, at your pace. Not at your opponent's pace, unless you have a hard removal, but just at your pace. So hard removals are less useful than in the prior meta. But on top of that, and partly because there's no large taunts, and as part of this like web of, of meta things that's happening, it also means that just decks that generally push are going to be more successful because your opponent's late game stabilization is going to be weaker. Okay, so bucketing, number one is bucketing. That's gonna affect everything. Caveat, asterisk, everything. Two, there are so many things happening right now that that support a push it meta that it's just going to happen. Regardless of what Blizzard is doing, we're going to push the tempo here. We're going to push the curves. 
Now, this new set has come in. The old sets are actually fine on this, but the new set is coming in, and there are no, there's no neutral initiative in the new set, or like barely any. In the new set, your neutral initiative looks something like like this card, which which is a kind of an insane card, but um, it's Hog Clan Hogsteed. Two mana, two one rush, death rattle summon a one one murloc. Is it a great card? Yes, it's a freaking amazing card. But like it still only gives you two damage of initiative. Like ultimately, there's just not a lot of cards in this new expansion um, on the neutral side that gives you any amount of initiative at all. Like that initiative means the ability to damage something uh, more than what you had on the board at the beginning of the next turn. So usually it's in the form of removals, but it could also be uh, buffs. There's not a lot of buffs either. There's not a lot of rush cards. There's just the neutrals are very neutrally in this new expansion. Uh, you are going to retain Witchwood, which has a lot of initiative cards because that was the rush set. Uh, but other than that, it's it's really like there's a lot less stuff happening. There's no bears coming, um, uh, like Amani War Bears. That's gone. Um, yeah, there's no like Fire Plume Phoenixes. Like a lot of your ways of getting initiative is gone. Your your Fungal Mancers, your up on the buff side, so many things are gone. Right, Fungal Mancers gone, Bone Mares gone. Uh, you're just overall going to see less, less like swinginess among the neutrals. There's some killer uh, removals out there in the new set, but overall the new set has like I forget what the percentage is. It's more than fifty percent, but it's less than seventy five percent of initiative cards that the average expansion has had. I did the math, um, so you don't have to, but I don't have the math with me here. Uh, so this is a very not initiative heavy set. Uh, yeah, and what happens when there's not initiative? When there's not initiative, that means you need to be on the board or you don't get to make decisions, right? Because in the game, every minion that, ha that like starts out uh, like after one turn, right? You play the minion and one turn later, you can decide where it hits. So that's initiative too. You don't get to play it from your hand. You have to wait a turn, but that's initiative. That's how you make your decisions. So if you have less of the just, uh, just flat-out removals, then what you're going to need more of is stuff on the board. And to have more stuff on the board, that fits into the whole thing of everybody fighting for the board in the beginning, right? Two drops are definitely a thing. Three, starting at three, that's out. There's, there's no, like, amazing three drops now to, like, to, to anchor you. Like, think about how you were being anchored before um, when you're trying to play threes, right? Stonehill Defender was a good anchor. Not there anymore. Eggnapper, so many stats, not there. Hildnir, not there. Micro, oh, Microtech Controller, not there. Lone Champ, that's the ultimate of like the three mana. Oh, you have twos? I don't care card. Uh, it's not there. Oh, Giant Wasp, okay, that wasn't the best um, for my example, but still, not there, right? Like all of these cards are no longer there to help you anchor on three. Uh, whereas before, there wasn't really a way to anchor on two. Here, let me show you something. I'm going to zoom out the tier list a bit, right? This is the old tier list. If you notice the old tier list, which is the one that's currently live, and you look at what's below the three mana, you see very high scores compared to what's on the four mana side and the two mana side, especially the two mana side, right? There's like a difference here of something like, like eight points on average, if not higher. And on the uh, compared to the four mana side, there's like a difference of like five points. That's just... So for each spot, if you look at your top six three drops versus top six four drops or top six three drops versus top six two drops, your options are just so much better on three. Now look at the new tier list. The two drop side and the four drop side are actually significantly, not like by a ton, but by a little bit higher than your scores on the three drop side. So what that means is there are better twos and better fours at the top than threes now. The positions have been reversed. And when the positions are reversed, like, you, you can't do what you used to be able to do. You can't just go out there and not have twos. Okay, so you can't not have twos. You're going to start on twos. You're going to push it. They're not going to have large taunts to block you. Both sides need initiative, so both sides need to put stuff out and win the board. Um, that's kind of where we're at. This is the meta that's going to happen in Rise of Shadows. It doesn't really matter how Blizzard buckets things. Um, if Blizzard really just buckets all the initiative cards lower, it could mess with my theory a little bit, but that has to be like a lot of missed bucketings. Um, and given what we know about player behavior and what cards they select, uh, players tend to like initiative cards. They tend to rate them a little higher than they're actually even worth. So I don't see that happening.
Okay, so let's build that out one level further. We're on the board, we have two drops, we're pushing, not a lot of really large taunts, some like mid-range taunts, uh, but not a lot of super large taunts, and there's not a lot of initiative. This brings me to the final point, which is that I know some people out there have been looking at certain particular cards and thinking, oh my god, the control meta's back. Especially if you're thinking back to uh, MSG and the MSG meta, where it was kind of a control meta. It was kind of the first control meta that the game had ever seen. And the game kind of never looked back after that, because it went from MSG to Angoro. And Angoro was a huge control meta. So, only recently, in the last few metas, have we switched back into a more balanced meta, and now people are afraid that we're going back to a control meta, potentially. Not because there's not enough cards for a curve, but because the curve cards are all kind of not so great. They're, like, good, but they're not great, whereas the control cards are great. Um... We're talking mostly about things like Dragonfire Potion, Fellfire Potion, Warpath is still around, um, Hagatha Scheme is now a new thing that destroys everything. Just a lot of great control cards are still existing. Um, and I'm here to say that's not going to happen. Because of everything we've said before, because of a general lack of initiative, lack of taunting, because of the fact that control metas happen more often when you can get away with not having twos. Because if you need twos also, and you're building a control deck, like what, what, are, what, are, you, what are you controlling, right? Then you're just kind of a, a slightly slower mid-range deck. Not really a true control deck. Definitely not like an attrition deck. So these kinds of attrition priests, attrition warriors, attrition warlocks, which is a weird thing to say, but really a lot of warlocks play in a very attrition-based way. And warlocks are more uh, successful in an attrition-based meta when other people can't attrition, right? They're the original attrition class, but they actually run out of cards the fastest because of their hero power. Um, and their control meta is not going to happen because Dragonfire Potion is epic. It's actually going to get offered less than uh, like half, at half the rate of your normal control card. And Priest has no other control cards left. It has a Holy Nova, which is an overpriced consecration if you're not on the board. Like it's good, but it's not great. You have um, Potion of Madness, which is great at controlling if you get it in the very beginning. So it's a very swingy card. It's a very RPS, rock, paper, scissors kind of card where if you have it, you win. If you don't have it, you don't win. But let's say you put a Potion of Madness into your deck. Are you really going to have it on the first like turn or two or three turns? That's a very low percentage of chance. So you'll, you'll see when we get to Potion of Madness. I think a lot of people are going to be very disappointed at the score because it's not a super premium score. And we always knew it was not going to be a super premium score because on average, the card does not help you as a good player that much. It just ups the rock, paper, scissors so freaking hard that it hurts you if you're a good player. That, uh, that this card is so existent in the meta. But you using it is like you using an RNG card. It doesn't really help as much. And the Lifeforce tier list is always, put, is always giving scores from the perspective of you are a very, very, very good player. So, um, Priest, ultimately... For good players, at least, they don't have enough tools to actually control the board. You have no Psychic Scream. You have uh, Dragonfire Potion, which is a worse Psychic Scream for the most part. Um, and it is coming like it is coming at the same offering rate as Psychic Scream. Uh, how often do you get Psychic Screams as Priest? Not all that often. Like Control Priests are living off of Mass Hysteria right now. And Mass Hysteria had an offering bonus on top of it being not an Epic. That's just all gone. So... Where <clears throat> priests are not going to be able to really control. Uh, warriors has Warpath, and that's it. Warriors lived on large taunts and healing and a lot of card draw, right? And Warpath is a way to get you to the late game. Well, now, Warriors don't really have card draw anymore. They don't really have any other board clears besides Warpath, although they never really had any other board clears besides Warpath. They kind of did with Super Collider, but that's gone. Um... And they don't have the large taunts anymore because their class large taunts are all gone with the Tar Creepers and stuff leaving. Um, the, the other one, the one that can't attack, uh, also leaving. Uh, and they just they have nothing left and the neutrals are gone. So Warriors, not really going to control all that well either. So you're left with only two classes where control is possible, where they have enough cards to control in this meta. And that is the best control class in this meta by far, Warlock. Abyssal Enforcer, like here. Uh... If you look at uh, how the warlock, uh, how the warlock system is is played, just look at the top cards, right? Hellfire, 
191. Fellfire Potion, 214. Doom, 193. Abyssal Enforcer, 191. You have a Dread Inferno, 156. Twisting Nether, 169. Shadow Flame still there, 171. Okay. You got a pretty damn good uh, package when it comes to playing a control game. Um, you're not going to have problems with Warlock. I'm not saying Warlocks are going to have problems with controlling. If you want to play control, you're going to stick with Warlock. Also, Shaman can kind of get it going. I don't really know how well this is going to work out, but Shaman has Hagatha Scheme, which is the new card coming in. That's 5 mana, deal 1 damage to all minions. Um, it, is, uh, it upgrades each turn. So if you just have it in your hand for a while, it becomes a pretty good removal. Um, and it'll still have Lightning Storm. And it has a Walking Fountain on top of that, which is a new card. 8 mana, 4, 8, Lifesteal, Rush, Wind Fury. So it could deal 4 damage to 2 targets and heal you for 8. And probably still be alive on the board. So that's a pretty damn good control card. So you have, uh, you have those two classes that can probably play control. I mean, Warlock could definitely play control. It, it's probably going to be hard not to play control with Warlock. Um, but... Um, or like hard, not as in you can't make Zoo work, but as in you're going to be really incentivized to play control because they're going to keep sticking amazing control cards into your offering pool. Um, and Shaman's kind of like, okay, um, at control. And that's it. Everyone else is going to be on the board fighting for the freaking board. So that's kind of a different meta than we've seen in the last two years. Um, and, and it's a big jump from how... I think the last meta was pretty balanced between control and uh, and on the board play. Um, for the like the last six to eight months have had pretty balanced metas when it comes to archetypes. Uh, before that, it was like a year and a half of control meta, and uh, and now I think we're going to be in a pretty tempo based meta now, uh, where control uh, classes are like they come in and they like wreck things and you're like oh my god someone built a successful control deck or oh i'm facing warlock i guess my whole strategy doesn't work now um so yeah so that's uh that's my summary of uh of the ROS meta i would love to get more more detailed into it um and we'll go through every single card one by one right after this uh but because of the very first point i was making bucketing by blizzard we really can't get more in detail than this. These are just, this is the level that I'm confident in saying these things will happen regardless of how they bucket. Um, because of the card pool. Everything else is going to, all the micro stuff is going to be affected by bucketing. It's going to be affected by the class adjust. They also micro adjust the classes up and down. Like if a class is doing too poorly, they'll just like give it better buckets more frequently. So uh, I don't think they know what they're doing with the meta they just want to get the number to 50 percent so we're just we're, we're reading things at a very high level um so that no matter what blizzard does these things will happen because let's say they don't adjust warlock very well and warlock is everywhere in the meta they're still at most one third of the meta right that's the most you're going to see control as if everybody picks warlock whenever they get a chance to because two-thirds of the time you won't even get to select warlock and then there's going to be plenty of people who just don't want to play Warlock, even if they uh, get it. So it's not really a big deal. And on the other hand, if they make Warlock a bit weaker than they should, then you're really not going to see control anywhere, right? So this is how the meta builds. We're pushing it. There's less large taunts, more mid-game taunts. If you don't like super tempo play, then you're going to focus on the mid-game taunts and play a mid-range game, maybe even a late, later mid-range kind of game. But you still need two drops. You still need to get on the board. Like, the meta is going in that direction. So, you don't have to, like, push the face, but you have to fight for the board. And um, you can't rely on large taunts. You got to rely on mid-game taunts. Um, there's not going to be a lot of initiative that's going to feed into that. And finally, all the control cards are low offering rates or gone, except in a in one and a half class. So that's the meta wrap-up for Rise of Shadows. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I am Adwukta. This is the Grinning Goat. And uh, before we go, and before my voice dies on me, um, if you can't tell, I'm very sick. Um, I am going to uh, give a shout-out to our top patrons who make this possible. Thank you so much. 4P, Afro Ninja TB, Brand New, Changin, Ingo, Joshua C, Kirby 5 Life, Talon, Eric L, and RV Night Train. Seriously? 
Thank you guys so much. Keep the lights on the LifeForge podcast, of which this is the part of. And um, if you are listening to this right now on the LifeForge podcast, the video is available on YouTube. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to grab it on the go, um, the uh, it's available on podcast on, I think, every podcasting service that we could we could think of. Uh, we recently got added to Spotify a couple months ago. Um, so, yeah. Thank you guys so much. We'll be back with the top neutral cards of this meta.